Well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Por favor. <laughs> Come on. Let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. What are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, funny, Willis just can't shut up. Man, but you know what? She's making me get more views, more eyeballs here. So thank you, Fanny. You keep it going, okay? Thank you kindly. Man, so she came out a few weeks ago during her Easter egg hunt. And I did a little video on it, but I got really got tired of her. So I kind of scrapped the video and just just didn't want to play with it. So, um, but man, she just she just want my attention, I guess, because she keeps putting her foot in her mouth. So Judge McAfee, before he did his ruling, said that uh finally you need to stop talking about race. But you think she will listen? No, 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 no. Hard out here always having to prove yourself two and three times. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Yes, Bonnie. Just keep going. Keep talking about race. Keep playing the victim card. That's, that's all we like. We like to hear victimhood. Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. <clears throat> so I see this article here from the New York Sun. And they were talking about um, that she might get gagged for talking about race again. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. She does not care. All right. Now, the judges will put gag order, gag order on Trump. You know, if you talk about a judge's daughter, we get this. No. <laughs> It's time to do something different. Like, we're not going to have this conversation again. I have come on the air with breaking news about requests for gag orders because of threats for judges and their kids more times than I could count today before I got ready. And Judge Ludig, I think it's time. I don't know who has to write the banners at the bottom of my show. I'm sorry in advance. But Donald Trump broke the rule of law. And we should cover a broken judiciary in this country. Donald Trump managed to delay every federal criminal trial based on facts that he barely denies. Donald Trump managed to enlist the Supreme Court in a delayed process, the highest court in the land. Donald Trump brazenly and repeatedly attacks not just judges, and I've had the privilege of sitting across not just from you, Judge Ludig, but from Judge Esther Salas, whose son was assassinated by a crazy person. Judges don't have Secret Service protecting them. They don't even always have, I mean, her child answered the door. What are we going to do different? Because Donald Trump sure as hell isn't changing. Right? So they want him to be gagged. They don't want him talking about this daughter of the judge who is raising $93 million against him. And this is the same judge as watching the case over the hush money case. But they want to gag Trump. You gag, you gag the black woman. You think she's going to stand for that? Oh, hell no. No, no, no. She's a strong black woman. She's going to have none of that. So she's going to talk her mind. You can put all the gag order you want to. It's not going to happen, and you're not going to do nothing about it, period. What you going to do? She done run the court. She done run McAfee out of here. And you think a little gag order going to shut her up? No. Doug, this appeal came just hours after you heard from Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis. 
Yeah, that's right, Alan. She made a public appearance at an event honoring the women officers of the city of South Fulton Police. But let's talk about that appeal first very quickly. Uh, former President Donald Trump and several of his co-defendants asked the state appellate court to hear their appeal on whether or not Fonnie Willis should stay on this case. Uh, this is, of course, uh, part of that long battle to get her removed from the case that has now gone on for months. And so what will happen now is the court has 45 days to decide if they want to take this case up. They can also of course, reject uh, the uh, ask from these defendants on taking it up in the first place. Uh, but of course, this is all over that perceived conflict of interest and Fonnie Willis's relationship with her top prosecutor that spanned for over a year during the indictment. Uh, the state appeals court, again, still has to make that call. Judge Scott McAfee has noted that while this all plays out, he will continue with proceedings through that time. And as you mentioned, this came just hours after D.A. Willis dressed police officers in the city of South Fulton. And, you know, it's all the fault of these black preachers, black men. This is your fault, too. You, you, let, you, you, you allow this. You allow this to fester in our community. You keep um, um, championing this behavior. Not just Fannie Willis. I'm talking about other strong black women. You always uh, patting on them back and say, yeah, but yeah, queen, you can do it, queen. And now we got this. It's all over the place. Black preachers, it's all your fault. Here's an example. The man who's on trial has said everything profane that you could possibly say. He told us that you can grab a woman by her private parts. And we have yet to hear an outlash, even from the white church, the white evangelical church, on his behavior. And these lawyers come into a courtroom in Fulton County, Georgia, and attack Fonnie Willis and say she's disqualified. They won't disqualify him to be president, but they'll disqualify her from this case. You can talk about whether or not out of marriage, or you can do all that stuff. Two consenting adults. They couldn't prove, they have not proved that there was any financial benefit. Bonnie Willis came down in the courtroom and she decided that she was going to take them on head on. She walked up to the table, just threw the notes on the table and said, let's get it on, I'm ready. And she fought for what she had worked for, Amen. that it not be somehow besmirched by lies. If I've never been a proud black man before in my life, I've been a proud black man this week. She ran to the courtroom, took that stand, and put that whole situation in order. Long before there was a Fannie Willis, there was a man in the Bible who said what he said and stood by what he said. And if you go to John chapter 9, we find that there was a man born blind. Now understand, before you read chapter 9, if you go back and read chapter 8, you find that the Pharisees were very angry with Jesus. They were trying to set Jesus up, just like Trump's uh, attorneys were trying to set up Fannie Willis and trying to make Jesus say something that would get him in trouble. She killing it, ain't she? <laughs> they can't do nothing. Fannie Willis, they were trying to talk about, she was using a man. I don't need no man to take care of me. That woman, she, ooh, they can't do nothing with her. I love my black women. I ain't gonna even lie. Yeah, I don't know what they say. So, yeah. When we say that the attitude of the black woman has gone run amok, we have receipts. We even have um, Fonnie Willis is proud to be the face of the feminist movement. We African-American women who will just say, we are so proud. You are such a good representative of us. But I would be lying to say it's only African-American women. I have had Caucasian women, Asian women, Indian women. Um, I told Jeff one day, I didn't think I was the face of the feminist movement, but somehow I became it. Yep, that was her recently at an Easter egg hunt. You know, she's proud to be the face of the feminist movement, to be a strong black woman. You know, always using the victimhood. How'd you get to this position, playing the victim card? I see so much greatness in this city that has so many great African-American leaders. And I appreciate all of the sacrifice that you all have had to make to be in these positions. So, Chief Meadows, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for having the intelligence to create an event like this where we recognize that you've had to go through a little more to serve. Well, there you go, guys. She's going to be investigated. She's going to be going through committees. She's going to go through the the whole gambit, okay, all the way till November. And nobody deserved it more than Folly Willis. There you go, girl. Take a bow, girl. This is all for you. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, guys, that's all we got for you today. 
If you got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> Go, girl. All right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you Democrats, get off my lawn.